Welcome everyone to the April TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park and I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. I hope everybody's having a great week and a, and a beautiful spring so far. As we gather in this shared virtual space, we'll begin as we normally do by acknowledging the physical places from which we join, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. I joined from Austin in the central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal, and I invite you to share your own land acknowledgments in chat if you'd like to. We'll follow our usual agenda uh, shown here on this slide. I'm joined today by our Deputy Director Courtney Muma and our Communications Manager Leah DeForest in providing updates. Thank you uh, also to Megan Hernandez for sharing slides today and advancing them for us. Okay, so a couple of Director updates. Um, I'm really pleased to start off with a couple of pieces of good news about growth of the TDL Consortium. We'd like to welcome a new Vireo affiliate member, the University of Illinois Chicago. UIC has been a self-hosted Vireo user for a number of years and will now be using our hosting service uh, to provide ETD uh, submission and publishing services for their campus. Vireo Tech Lead Frank Smutniak is working as we speak to deploy Vireo for them in the latest version. Secondly, we're pleased to add Texas Women's University's digital collections to the materials we're aggregating for the Digital Public Library of America. To start, we'll be gathering metadata from their Women Air Force Service Pilots Collection and the TWU University Archives, and those materials will be discoverable via DPLA after our quarterly July harvest. So we're really excited to have those collections alongside the other TDL member collections that we harvest for DPLA. Okay, um, just briefly, I want to remind everybody about something we discussed in slightly more depth last forum um, that we've implemented or we're in the process of implementing a new policy around member group coordination and um, particularly some changes around the way we coordinate and launch interest groups that are hosted at TDL. So as part of that new policy, we have a new process for proposing and launching interest groups, which are community organized and led groups that gather members around particular affinities, professional roles, or topics of interest. Our TDL GIS interest group and the research integrity, integrity interest group, the uh, imaging group are examples of these. If you like to propose and lead an interest group, we have a Google form set up for submitting that proposal and some requirements for getting started. And we'll share links to both the form and the policy in chat so you can learn more. But please contact, contact us at info at tdl.org. If you have any questions or want to discuss an idea for a group, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, so moving on into services and projects. <clears throat> Starting with DSpace. Um, so, um, as it has been for a while now, our DSpace 7 upgrades task force is, has been meeting and um, is has been developing some documentation and help for our community of users as we prepare for upgrades of our hosted repositories that those upgrades we have scheduled to start sometime after TCDL in June and that process will go through the summer and into the fall as we work through our all of our 20 plus hosted DSpace repositories. We're going to provide a link to our wiki page, which you can use to stay abreast of the work that we're doing and I want to just call out in particular our um, resident digital librarian Ima Adwak who has completed some fabulous um, 
documentation in our wiki that we'll be sharing out more broadly um, at TCDL and, and after TCDL for helping folks get comfortable with um, the new DSpace 7 user interface. Um, we do have a DSpace user group meeting next week, April 25th. That's not next week. Yeah, next week, um, April 25th. So we hope you'll join us for that. That'll be our last uh, user group meeting before TCDL. And then our DSpace 7 task force has a number of presentations, a couple of presentations in the TCDL program. So we will be presenting um, on our collaborative exploration of the newest DSpace um, on Thursday morning. Um, Let's see, that's May 18th, 9 a.m. And um, that will be an update on the work we've been doing, some of the challenges and, and benefits of working in collaboration as we prepare our community for these upgrades. The task force is also doing a live demo and, and a, a more detailed kind of training demo during the DSpace user group meeting at TCDL. That will be later on that Thursday afternoon at 3.30 p.m. So if you're a DSpace user and you're going to be at, at TCDL next month, we I, I encourage you to attend both of those sessions. I think they'll be really great and useful. Um, there's also a great looking talk from UT San Antonio about using their DSpace repository to archive press books, OERs and open textbooks um, that will, is in the, the program schedule as well. And finally, um, DSpace and other software developers are welcome to join the developers Birds of a Feather at TCDL, which will be Tuesday morning from 11 to 12. So um, we'll share a link out to the TCDL program. We're going to be sharing out a few highlights um, from the TCDL program throughout today's presentation. Uh, and I'm really excited about the way it, it's shaping up. Moving on to OJS, um, a couple of updates. I think in, in last month's forum, we shared that we had been planning to do some minor upgrades to our OJS hosted journals this month. But because of the intensive work going on with DSpace right now, we've delayed that upgrade by a few months. It's rescheduled for the fall. This upgrade was a very minor release, but it did have a few bug fixes in it. So um, in lieu of the upgrade, our system administrator, Nick Lawland, has been applying a few key patches to address those bugs across all of our hosted journal websites um, so that those bugs won't won't cause problems for for anybody um, in the meantime. Our next OJS uh, user group meeting will be Thursday, May 4th at 10 a.m. And if you're an OJS user, we uh, would be delighted to have you attend that. Some members of the OJS user group are um, doing a poster at TCDL entitled Open Journal Systems, a look at impact and increased visibility. So we hope you'll keep an eye out for that at the poster session at TCDL. And anyone interested in discussing open access publishing challenges should join the Idea Lab at TCDL on Thursday afternoon at 2.30. Members of the TDL community are leading a conversation called, how many graduate degrees does it take to figure out if it's open access? <laughs> sounds like a good, good discussion. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Courtney to continue our service updates. Hi, everybody. I'm Courtney Muma, Deputy Director of TDL. Um, pronouns are she, her. I'm joining you from Tampa, Florida this morning. I'll be on my way back to Texas this afternoon. Um, so thanks to the rest of the team for holding up everything while I'm here. Um, so let's get started with some service updates for our electronic thesis and dissertation management system, Vireo. Um, as you all know, and as we've told you, TDL participated in a community development sprint last month, which resulted in significant improvements in Vireo 4. Frank Smutniak, our lead developer on Vireo for TDL, has been upgrading and migrating remaining members. 
And then Texas A&M has actually continued to work on some remaining issues and accessibility fixes in Vireo 4 with the, with the Vireo user group steering committee's product owner, Christopher Starcher, who is from Texas Tech. So we just want to extend another thank you to those developers. Those contributions from both Christopher at Texas Tech and especially the developers there at Texas A&M who host their own instance of Vireo locally are truly in the spirit of giving back to our Vireo open source community and we're incredibly grateful. So um, let's get into some of the ETDs in the T TCDL po program. Um, you'll have several sessions to choose from. On Wednesday the 17th, there's a presentation from 10 to 1045 called Break Drift Rot, how academic librarians can weatherproof references in electronic theses and dissertations. There is a lightning talk from 11 to 12 on the same day called Kiki's Delivery Service and Lesser Prairie Chickens, an analysis of dissertation related reference questions. And then on Thursday the 18th, there's a presentation as a part of a session um, called FAIR ETD Repositories, and that's FAIR, F-A-I-R, ETD Repositories of G20 Countries, Comparative Studies with Respect to NDLTD's Global ETD Search. So moving on to our research data management service, the TDR steering committee is meeting um, for their annual meeting at TCDL on Wednesday the 17th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. This meeting is closed to just the TDR liaisons and any of their guests for that meeting. Um, additionally, there's more research data management content in the TCDL program. There is a um, poster called, Hi, I'm a TDR user, and that's presenting some of the results of our user survey conducted by the steering committee. And then on Wednesday the 18th, there's a presentation from 9 to 9.45 a.m. called A Pilot Study on Social Science Graduate St Students' Data Core C Competency. And then on both Wednesday and Thursday from 11 to 12, the Texas Advanced Computing Center, which we know and love as TAC, is actually hosting tours for TCDL attendees. Each tour can take 15 people. Registration is required to participate in the tour and the deadline to register for those is Monday, May 8th. The tours will meet at the registration desk at TCDL and then walk a very short distance to TAC. So if you go bring a sweater too, because it's pretty cold with all the servers at TAC. So some next updates, um, our digital preservation service. Um, the next digital preservation interest group meeting is tomorrow, April 20th. So I hope to see many of you there who have an interest in digital preservation. Um, TDL, as some of you also know, is a partner on the Digital Preservation Service Collaborative or DPSC, um, an Educopia hosted IMLS planning grant called Sustainable Community Owned Partnerships in digital preservation. Um, we would like to ask you to please take a little time to fill out the survey for the digital preservation practitioners specifically to assess how a collaborative, open source, community supported, values based approach to digital preservation can be resilient, sustainable, inclusive, extensible, and adaptable to end, end user needs. The survey itself will inform the design of a future collaborative service model among the DPSC partners, again, which we are a member of TDL. We have questions um, in the survey about your organization's digital preservation workflows, your staffing levels, research and development priorities at your institution around digital preservation, what kind of infrastructure requirements there are, advocacy strategies, and desirable cost models for digital preservation. We're looking for responses, responses specifically from practi practitioners in digital preservation, as well as individuals who are tasked with making decisions about digital preservation and third party um, services at their organizations. So please do take a minute to do that. We'll share the link. And then of course at TCDL, we'll have some digital preservation content for you on Wednesday the 17th. Please join an idea lab conversation about EPAD and web archiving. Um, EPAD is email archiving for be beginners. And then on the same day from 3.30 to 4.15, two presentations related to digital preservation work. One is called A Path to Open and Accountable Digital Preservation Collaboration. And that's me. Uh, the second is We're Gonna Make It, Lessons from Coordinating a Campus Collaboration. 
Um, additionally, we have a birds of a feather for the digital preservation interest group at TCDL on Thursday, the 18th from 3.30 to 4.15. So if you want to meet some of the folks from the digital preservation interest group in person, please join us. Um, and now some updates on Tech's Hub. Um, super happy to see Elliot Williams here. We miss you, but we're happy you're started at UTSA now. And thanks for coming to the forum. So the DPLA local site that Elliot started and um, got ready for us is now live. So you can go to texas.dp.la to search collections contributed from Tech's Hub partners at the Portal to Texas History and at TDL. Um, also, there are going to be many sessions, of course, related to digital collections at TCDL. So nothing DPLA specific or tech sub specific this year, but of course, TCDL is all about digital collections. So if you have interest in the DPLA service, please do find me or anyone else at TDL at the conference and we'll talk to you about how to get started. And with that, I'll hand off to Leah to give us community updates. Thanks, Courtney, and good morning, everyone. This is Leah DeForest, she, her. I'm the communications manager with Texas Digital Library. I'm really glad you could make it today. So um, before we move into some a deep dive into the TCDL program and more TCDL updates, I want to remind you that tomorrow evening, TDL will host a happy hour at Easy Tiger in Austin on East 7th Street. It's really close to the location for TLA. So we're calling it TDL at TLA. Um, this is about a 10 minute drive from the convention center and TDL will spring for the appetizers, but any drinks will be on your own. And we'll have a link in chat where you can learn more. Even if you're not going to TLA, but you're in the Austin area, feel free to join us. Okay, and now for TCDL stuff. So our program is live and we've shared links a couple of times and it might behoove you to open up those links and follow along a little bit um, on our website. I'm just gonna give kind of an overview of each day um, and talk through some of the highlights of our program. Before I do, I wanna really commend our committee for pulling together such a fun and amazing program that is gonna be both exciting and chill for this year's first in-person conference for us, uh, for TDL since 2019. Second, and this might be obvious on the slide, we have stickers. So yeah, <laughs> if you come to TCDL, you get a sticker. All right, so let's talk about day one. Um, first, let me point out that every day we are serving breakfast and lunch and we'll have breaks and beverages. Um, so please know that your registration includes uh, a couple of meals and um, food. So the first day we have um, a morning coffee that is especially geared towards people who are new to TCDL and for any students who are joining us. This is open to anybody and it'll be during the time when we're serving breakfast, but we just wanna point out that if you're kind of new to the conference and you wanna get your sea legs, this might be a fun session to join. We're starting off the day, our morning sessions are birds of a feather meetings. And so we're thinking those meetings are um, a low key way for attendees to sort of ease into the conference vibe um, and find some friends around uh, common interests and conversation. After those morning sessions, we have lunch and we hope everyone will be ready to get the party started after lunch with our opening plenary session. And that's where we'll welcome everyone to the conference. We'll announce the TDL award winners during our ceremony. And that's when our keynote address with Sophia Lung will take place. So that's gonna be a really important session that we don't want you to miss. Um, should be a lot of fun. After that, we hope everyone will come back to the auditorium for our Poster Poco Loco session. Poster Poco Loco used to be called Poster Minute Madness, but we're changing things up a little bit. And it should be really fun for both the session presenters and attendees. And then finally, day one of our conference will wind down with our reception and we'll have appetizers, we'll have some beer and wine and other beverages and hope everyone will stick around and join us for the end of the day to wrap things up. So days two and three will have really similar schedules and sessions, kind of a, a familiar conference vibe. 
we'll have sessions filled with presentations and lightning talks. We'll also have some of those newer sessions like idea labs where everyone will be invited to bring issues and discuss them with people and brainstorm, collaborate. Um, pointing out again, we will feed y'all that day. We've got breakfast and lunch and breaks. And wanna point out that each day, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll have um, a start with breakfast and then those community coffees. We'll also have a lunch hour with no competing sessions. So you can just not, you can just enjoy lunch, catch up with friends, take a walk outside. Hopefully it should be nice. And we'll end each day with TDL member group meetings. And so if you're part of those member groups, hopefully you've been in touch, um, but also keep an eye out on the schedule. Finally, I wanna point out that for each day of the conference, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, our planning committee has been really thoughtful about providing space for quiet time and for networking because we recognize that it can be a lot to be in person again. It also recognized that you may have seen somebody, maybe seeing somebody you haven't seen in, in a few years and you wanna catch up with them. So we have rooms uh, uh, designated for this. We have one room designated for a quiet space to recharge. We'll have some, um, cute uh, coloring pages and crayons for people if they just kind of want to zone out. We'll also have a, another room that we're calling a networking space. So if you want to catch up with a colleague in a quiet space, we'll have a room for that. Um, lots, lots more, but I uh, want to keep going because we're just about out of time. So next slide, please, Morgan. Okay, so on this slide, um, this has a we're going to drop a bunch of links in the chat, but I just want to point out a few resources. So many of our members are speaking and presenting at our conference. And so we have developed um, a special thanks to our uh, speaker support committee and our poster committee. We have developed some FAQs that might help you um, get started. We have links on those pages where we've recorded some session um, descriptions, et cetera. I also want to point out that we have a land acknowledgement uh, for the conference that is, of course, very similar to the one we've given here, but more tuned towards in person and also a way for folks to participate um, with our Beyond the Land Acknowledgement document. Again, speakers, I hope you'll um, attend our orientation on April 28th. And that is open to anybody who wants to attend. If you're an attendee and you're not planning to speak, we'll probably talk about stuff that will be of interest to you, but the registration is required. Um, the first part of the orientation will be recorded. And then after the presentation is over, we'll stop recording and have plenty of time for Q&A. I also wanna point out a resource for y'all as you think about getting registered. We have a really great document. Um, Cynthia Henry helped us build, Cynthia from Texas Tech, and she drew on an ALA tool. It's called Make the Case for TCDL. So if you're um, on the fence or still needing ways to find um, support for attending, well, support equals funding in this case, we hope you'll use this document um, to help you. And then a reminder that April 30th is our early bird registration deadline. After April 30th, the price goes up for both members and non-members. We have, um, thanks to Megan, secured lodging at Hampton Inn and La Quinta at a deep discount for our attendees. We also have a spreadsheet on our lodging page that uh, will allow you to look for roommates or carpooling um, friends so that if you need to defray or stretch your uh, professional development funds, this might be a great way to, to find a way to stretch those dollars. And then the conference dates, I want to point out that we have, uh, after our program was set, we realized that we did not need Friday the 19th. And so I want to point out, especially to those of you who may have already booked your room, keep an eye out. Uh, Megan sent an email last week that outlines how you can change your reservation. There's no cost. It should be very easy and I'll be able to do online. But please let us know if you run into any trouble with changing your reservation if you happen to have a room through Friday morning. Okay, I think that's it for this TCDL slide. And so as usual, we have lots of upcoming meetings and events. I wanna point out a couple of things. First, the, the box with the member groups. 
Different member groups are meeting at TCDL, um, some of them for the first time in a, in a while, some of them just kind of in their usual time frame, but just at TCDL. Want to point out a couple of cancellations. Um, the GIS interest group is canceled for May. They're just going to be at TCDL that month, and that'll be the meeting for them. The next meeting for them will be in June. Our member forum is going to be canceled. We're going to be at TCDL. So if you want to find out what's going on at TDL, like that'll be it. It'll be TCDL. But we are canceling the May forum. We'll be back in June. The DSpace user group, they are deciding this week, or I'm sorry, next week at their next meeting, they're gonna decide whether their May um, meeting will be necessary. So if you're part of that group or if you're interested, let us, let us know and we'll um, be sure to clue you in. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. So please let us know if any questions come up about TCDL, you're free to email us. Um, where we've got lots of people ready to help you out if you run into any trouble. That's it for me. Thanks, Leah. Um, and thanks, Courtney, for those updates. Uh, we have a minute or two left for questions. If anybody has them here, you can um, enter them in chat or uh, or unmute yourself and and speak up. Um, hello, back to you, Bill. So glad you're here with us today. Thanks for joining. I also realized when I I, I left while, while people are thinking of questions, I, I left out one important piece of the DSpace update, which is I mentioned the intense DSpace work that's going on, but I did not mention that our DSpace tech lead, Nick Woodward, is the one who's doing much of that intense work um, and doing a fabulous job getting our systems and software ready to go um, for our members while also contributing back um, code and bug fixes to the global DSpace community um, to benefit DSpace users everywhere. So just a shout out to Nick and thank you for all that work. Okay. I don't see any questions or any typing. So we'll wrap it up here. We are so excited to see many of you in person next month at TCDL. Um, but we also want to see you in all of these virtual spaces that we have going um, and events coming up over the next month. So um, keep showing up and keep asking us questions. If you have anything that you want to talk about between now and next forum, you can always submit a question to our anonymous feedback form or just contact me or Courtney or Leah or any of us directly. We'd love to hear from you. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time and uh, soon in person. Bye. Take care.